No need to fight over it. There's plenty for all of you. Eddie? Oh, hello, love. Edward get off all right this morning, did he? Yeah, yeah. Only it's a bit of a drive down to Somerset. Yeah, I wanted to have Be a word. Be worth it, though, for him and William. They're getting paid well over the odds. Yeah. Mind you, there's such a shortage of skilled labour these days, ain't there? Got to make the most of it. Is everything all right, Eddie? Uh, how do you mean? Well, I couldn't help noticing last night. Oh, that was a really nice do, wasn't it, eh? Lovely to get all the family together. Yeah. Even though it was marking a sad occasion. I, I, I can't believe it's been three years since Dad died. Clary hardly said a word all evening. Yeah, how do you mean? Just that. She was really quiet, and it's not like her. I well, didn't notice. Well, I did. And when we were in the kitchen, I asked what was wrong, and of course she said it was nothing. Well, there you go, then. Then she admitted she was still upset about that business last week. What business? You pretending to be offended over her and Kenton, you know, having had that teenage kiss. Well, what you got to be upset about? I was defending her honour. No, you weren't. You were just trying to get one over on Kenton. Yeah, well, that didn't work, did it? Any road, it's uh, all over and done with now. No, not for Clary, it ain't. How do you mean? Don't you remember what Jolene said? Jolene? How dismissive she was, insisting she didn't feel the least bit threatened by Clary. Hey. You still don't get it, do you? Get what? Jolene fancies herself as glamorous and sexy with the hair and the makeup and the low cut tops. Whereas Clare, well, she doesn't care about stuff like that. So? But having Jolene point it out like that, in front of you especially, made Clary feel like, like some dowdy old matron that no one could possibly fancy. Well, I still fancy her. Have you told her lately? Well, she knows. We don't have to keep telling her. Well, when was the last time you did anything romantic? Well, uh, what about the renewal of our wedding vows? What's that if not romantic? That was last year, Eddie. What have you done since? Loads of things. Like what? Well, uh, only this morning I emptied the dishwasher for her. That's your idea of romantic, is it? She asked me to do it and I did. Oh, Eddie. What? One, she shouldn't have to ask. And two, what's romantic about emptying a dishwasher? The good news is that Chelsea's agreed to see a professional. What? Like a doctor? Got to be a midwife, apparently. Oh. I phoned the GP surgery and explained the situation to them, and they said what she needs is to talk to one of the midwives at the baby clinic. Oh, yeah. I remember when Kira was born. That was where Emma had to go for her to get her checkups and vaccinations and what have you. Anyway, the GP gave me the number, and I got on the phone straight away... But, of course, there's no-one there on a Friday night or at the weekend. Well, no, there wouldn't be. But we can't afford to wait for an appointment. We've got to get it done now, this week. I mean, if Chelsea decides she don't want to go through with it, well, she's running out of time. Well, if you want my advice... No, Susan, I really don't. Well, it's just expecting a teenager to make that sort of choice. Chelsea will do what's right for her. End of... But you can't pretend it doesn't concern you. I can see it in your face. You look terrible. Oh, thanks. You haven't been sleeping, have you? Not a lot, no. Great dark shadows under your eyes. I wake up at three, regular as clockwork. I can't get back to sleep. You should see a doctor in all <laughs> and get some sleeping pills. Tried them. Don't do any good, and I just feel even more knackered the next day. Oh, does Chelsea have any idea of the strain she's putting you under? She's all at sixes and sevens, Susan. Too wrapped up in her own confusion to notice anyone else. Would it help if I had a quiet word with her? No, for goodness sake. Don't you go sticking your oar in. You'll only make matters worse. But I'm worried about you. Oh, I'll be all right. I was just... So petrified when she disappeared the other week. Oh, I know. I don't risk putting any more pressure on her. I just have to grit my teeth and try to be calm and supportive. And we are making progress now that she's agreed to see this midwife. Get some proper advice. Oh, if you can get an appointment. Yeah, well, I'll be on that phone first thing tomorrow morning and I'm not taking no for an answer. Good morning, Jim. 
Oh, hello. Or is it afternoon? I've lost track. <laughs> Don't expect to see you here on a Sunday. Isn't this your busy day? Oh, well, Usha's away this weekend and we seem to have run out of coffee. And I am in desperate need of a strong shot of caffeine. Especially now I've had my ear bent at interminable length by Jean Harvey. What's her problem? <laughs> well, to be honest, I'm the one with the problem. What? Jean's a member of the parochial church council and we've got a meeting tomorrow evening and, well, we've had a proposal put to us which, which I think is completely unacceptable and I was rather relying on them to back me up. But Jean, she's got wind of it and has completely bought into it and won't hear a word said against it. Let me guess. Would this be Peggy Woolley's scheme for a new stained glass window in St Stephen's? What? You know about it? To celebrate the birth of her great-grandchildren? It's the talk of the village, Alan. Really? And for the record, I'm very much on your side. Right. Well, I was hoping that we could discuss the matter at tomorrow's meeting and firmly reject it. But from the way Jean Harvey was talking, she's not going to rest till everyone else backs the wretched window. You think Peggy has been nobbling your counsellors? Oh, I can't believe she would do that. Oh, I can. She likes to get her own way, does Peggy Woolley. Oh, she does, doesn't she? And she'll go to... Shh! This isn't supposed to be public knowledge. I'm afraid that ship has sailed, Alan. Morning, Eddie. How are you? Yeah, I was having a really good morning until half an hour ago. What went wrong? Oh, I got ticked off by my daughter-in-law for neglecting my wife. Neglecting Clary? Oh, apparently, I need to make a big romantic gesture, so I need a nice box of chocks. Well, there's the selection. Nothing to write home about, I'm afraid. Oh, these'll do. Sorry, Eddie, that's not much of a romantic gesture. It's what Clary likes. She don't go for the fancy dark chocolate. Well, can't you take her out to dinner or something? Can't afford it. Well, cook her a meal at home. Ah, that always ends in disaster. I can manage a fry-up, but that's my limit. Although, come to think of it... What? Oliver's away this week. And Edward's off on a job for the next few days, along with William. So me and Clary have got the house to ourselves, pretty much. Well, there you go. You help her with the dinner, peel the potatoes or whatever, get a nice bottle of wine... And some Bridge Farm strawberry ice cream. Always goes down well with Usha. And then afterwards you can snuggle up on the sofa with your box of chocks and watch a romantic film. Oh, as she works at the uh, dairy, I'm not sure she'll be overboard on the ice cream, but the film's a great idea. Brief Encounter. That's a good one. No, that's no good. What do you mean, no good? It's a classic. Yeah, it's got an unhappy ending. And it's in black and white. Nothing wrong with black and white. When Harry met Sally, that's what you want. That's a love story and it's very funny. Oh, it's OK. I know what Clary's favourite film is. But is it romantic? Oh, yeah. I know what you think, Susan. All I'm saying is they make it far too easy these days. Well, it's better than bringing children into the world who are going to be unloved and abused. Chelsea's child wouldn't be unloved and certainly not abused. I didn't and mean... believe me, Tracy, there's an awful lot of women have abortions and then spend the rest of their lives regretting it. Better than having a kid and spending the rest of your life regretting that. I'm just really glad I never had to make the choice. I mean, expecting someone of Chelsea's age to make a decision like this. And how will you feel if she does get rid of it? I mean, we are talking about your first grandchild. What I feel is neither here nor there. All I want is what's right for Chelsea. Going to make life difficult for you, though, isn't it? If she does decide to keep it. We cope, somehow. Well, you know you can always call on me, don't you? If you need a bit of help. I really miss that time when Christopher was in sole charge of Martha and I had to stay home and look after her. You did nothing but moan, Susan. I did not. About how much you had to do and how tired you were all the time. Well, I was. There's no getting away from the fact that little babies are very demanding and I'm not as young as I used to be. But it was a joy having my little granddaughter to look after and you'll feel the same. I know you will. If... Chelsea decides to keep it. Oh, I do hope she will. I know you do. But what you hope and what I hope don't matter. This has to be Chelsea's decision and I'm not having anyone try and influence her. Anyway, I'd better be getting home. How much is the coffee? 
385. Right. It was ever thus, though, wasn't it? What? With the church. Wealthy families building monuments to themselves. Buying indulgences. Oh, I think we've come along a bit since the olden days. The church is against these things now. All except your PCC. Well, it's not exactly that, Jim. Sorry, but I couldn't help overhearing what you were saying. Oh, dear. Like this stained glass window. And you're in favour of it too, are you, Emma? No, no, not at all. I was just going to say how much I agree with you. We were talking about it only last night, actually. We had a family get-together because, well, it's, it's just three years since Joe died. Is it really? Yeah, three years tomorrow, 10th of October. Good heavens. Where does the time go? Only he had a thing about the archers, do you remember? The way they acted, throwing money around like they owned the place. Oh, I remember all right. He used to hold forth a great length about there being one rule for the archers and another for the little people. That's not strictly true, though, is it? I mean, most of the archer family are hard-working farmers. Don't expect any different treatment. Well, whose side are you on, Alan? No, I'm not on anyone's side. I just feel we shouldn't disparage an entire family because of the actions of one individual. But she's a very influential individual, is Peggy Woolley. I mean, if she has managed to persuade Jean Harvey round to her point of view... No, we don't actually know that. And Jean is notoriously immovable in her opinions. Maybe she made up her own mind on the matter. Maybe she just likes the idea of this stained glass window. Well, I don't. I think Joe had the right of it. It's just another bit of Archer's egotism, isn't it? Well said, Emma. Now, I was wondering, I mean, my dad's on the PCC. Indeed he is. Would you like me to have a word with him? Oh, no, Emma, no. Uh, What's his opinion about this window? Honestly, I don't know. I haven't discussed it with him. I really don't think he should. I don't think he said anything about it last night. Look, this is a matter for the councillors to decide. I really can't countenance any kind of, of underhand tactics. There's nothing underhand about it. I'm just going to have a chat with my dad. Exactly. A conversation between two concerned individuals. It sounds like lobbying to me. So what if it is? Peggy has obviously been at it. So why shouldn't we? The thing is, Mum, you know Russ's painting of me? You have still got it, haven't you? Yes. Do you want me to get rid of it? No, no. I was wondering if perhaps we should have a ceremonial bonfire. <laughs> no. You paid good money for that. And I've had a much better idea... Can you dig it out for me, do you think? Yeah, sure. But what's she going to do with it? There's this art dealer, Kevin Ambrose, and he's bought several of Ross's pictures in the past, so I thought maybe he'd like to buy this one. Wasn't he at the gallery that night? No, he was away. But he knows Ross has left, and I told him about the picture, and he wants to come and have a look, and I bet I can persuade him to buy it. Even though it says Prodocia on the Certificate of Provenance? Perhaps he won't know what that means. But actually, I can use it. What do you mean, use it? To make him want the picture. How? He's coming to the gallery at two. Are you going to be around? Well, I can be. Well, then you'll see. And I didn't know if you'd prefer a tiramisu or, or cheesecake, so I got both. Oh, Eddie. Well, <laughs> it's a special occasion, isn't it? Long time since it's been just the two of us. You better hide it in the back of the fridge or George will have it. Oh, he's not going to be around this evening. Emma said uh, he's out with some mates from college. Oh, we really are going to have peace and quiet then. <laughs> Won't that be a treat? Uh, now, do you want me to help with the dinner, peel some potatoes? No! Oh, no, I do jackets. We're just having beef stew. Oh, beef stew, eh? <clears throat> Lucky I bought red wine. Wine as well? Goodness me, you have been pushing the boat out. Well, why not? Not often I get you all to myself of an evening. Mm. Oh, where's he, you great soft thing? Yeah, and we can drink a toast to Dad. You know what Joe always used to say? Beef stew is not beef stew without dumplings. Oh, he did, didn't he? <laughs> so how about it? Shall I knock us up some dumplings? What? Oh, Clary, now you're spoiling me. Mum, this is Mr Ambrose. Call me Kevin, please. Oh, and I'm Elizabeth. Very nice to meet you, Elizabeth. You've been to Lower Loxley before, have you? Oh, yes. I'm a regular here at your gallery. And you've bought several of Russ Jones's paintings, haven't you? I'm a great admirer of his work. 
And I was sorry to hear that he'd left the gallery. Oh, we're in the process of appointing a new curator. Now, the reason I've asked you over, Kevin, is that Russ left one particular painting behind. It's actually a portrait of me, but with a rather startling addition. Shall I show you? Yes, please. There. Oh, it's a very good likeness. It's lovely, isn't it? And a fine example of the Russ Jones technique, the subtlety of his palette, the sheer finesse of his brushwork. It was obviously painted with a great deal of love. It was painted a while ago, and I should perhaps explain that since then, Russ and I have decided to go our separate ways. Oh, I'm sorry. And he determined that the picture should be sold. So he put the certificate of provenance on the back and named it Prodosia. Ah. It's Greek. It means treachery or betrayal. Right. And now I can't actually look at it without seeing that word writ large across the canvas. Seeing in my face what my ex had unwittingly captured. The seeds of betrayal. You mean that slightly downward-looking glance? Exactly. As if I can't quite look him in the eye. As if my mind is elsewhere. As if I'm hiding my true feelings. It's subtly done, isn't it? Now you've mentioned it, it is there in the picture. That's what's so extraordinary about the Russ Jones technique. That he can capture something in paint that no one else can see. That even he can't actually see. It's just there, caught in the delicacy of the brush strokes. Yes. It gives the picture a peculiarly poignant resonance, doesn't it? It's why I can't bear to look at it anymore. Just knowing that word is on the back, it transforms that image of love into a story of anger and betrayal. And heartbreak. Indeed. That is why I love Russ Jones's work so much. The man's a genius. So would you be interested in buying it? I would certainly give you £800 for it. Oh, I don't think we could part with it for that, could we, Mum? Well... Um, a, a tale of love and heartbreak, all captured in that single image, by, as you say, an artist of genius at the very peak of his powers. I think it's worth more than that. Well, uh, thanks for trying anyway. Bye now. Oh, I don't believe it. What's the matter? That was Emma. And? I, I just can't believe anyone could change their mind like that. Well, what did she say? But only yesterday she was dead against this wretched stained glass window business. Oh, dear. She and Jim were both of them bad-mouthing the archers, going on about how they think they own the place. Well, that's not very fair. Yeah, I know, I know, and I told them, but the point is they both agreed with me about Peggy's window being inappropriate for the church. And now Emma's changed her mind. But she was going to have a word with her dad because, you know... Neil's on the PC. ...to persuade him to speak up against the project at tonight's meeting. That didn't work out. But it turns out he's 100% in favour of it. Neil is? Yeah, I know. He's usually the voice of reason in PCC meetings. I was absolutely relying on him. Do you think Peggy's got to him? No, I can't believe... Although he does seem to have used some of the same arguments as Gene Harvey. You know, how it won't just be a celebration of the Archer twins, but more a celebration of new life and hope and the rest of it. Well, that's fair enough, isn't it? But this from Emma who only yesterday was adamant that the window was a terrible idea and is now saying that maybe her dad has a point. You're telling me she was won over by Neil's eloquence? Apparently so. Well, I find that rather difficult to believe. Oh, what am I going to do? If Neil's own daughter can't talk him round, what hope do I have? Do you need a hand carrying it out? No, no, I can manage, thank you. I'm so glad you like the painting. I just knew it would appeal to you. I shall treasure it. So nice to have met you, Elizabeth. And you, Kevin. Uh, have a good journey back. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Lily, you are outrageous. <laughs> I can't believe what you just did. I'm good, aren't I? But what you said about the picture, you don't believe all that? Of course not. But I've spent a long time selling kitchens, Mum, and that's how you do it. Flatter the customer, talk their language. But a thousand pounds, Lily. I know. I really didn't believe he'd fall for that. You only paid 400 for it, didn't you? Mm -hmm. 
I'll transfer that into your account. Oh, no, 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 no. You keep it all, darling. Goodness me, you've earned it. And um, why don't you give yourself a night off? Go out on the town with your friends. Yes, I think perhaps I will. Now, you make yourself comfy on the sofa. Well, I really should tidy up that mess in the kitchen. Oh, no, that can wait. I don't want to come down in the morning to a pile of congealing dishes. You won't. Now, come on, sit yourself down. Oh, all right. And here, I got a box of chocks. What have I done to deserve this, Eddie? Now, let me turn the telly on and get this film lined up. What are we going to watch? Watch your most favourite film of all time. Love, actually. Got it in one. Oh, Eddie. Now, let me see. Which button do I have to press? Eddie. Hang on a minute. Can you hear sheep? What? Sheep. Listen. Oh, yeah. Sounds like they're right outside. Let me have a look. Oh, no. Looks like one of Edward's taxels has got itself stuck in the edge. Oh, I'd better give him a call. Yeah, but he's not here. He's off on that job with William. Oh, dear. I, oh, I'm sorry, Clary, but love actually is actually going to have to wait. Hello, love. How did it go? Total disaster. Oh, no. Well, it was all going swimmingly till item number six on the agenda, Peggy Woolley's window. Mm -hmm. And? Well, I said my piece, expressed my reservations, and they all turned on me. What? All of them? All of them. Jean kicked off. And then Neil had his say. Sounding rather apologetic, it obviously went against the grain for him to tell me I was in the wrong, but he did. And so there was a vote. And it was unanimous. All in favour. Except you. Except me. You know, I'm beginning to think I'm the only person in the world who thinks this is a truly terrible idea. But they can't go over your head as the parish priests, can they? No. But if I do stand in the way, I'm going to alienate my entire PCC, which is the last thing I want to do. OK, but isn't it the case that these things take years and an awful lot of boxes have to be ticked before the thing can go ahead? Well, yeah, that's true. So, surely somebody somewhere higher up the chain of ecclesiastical command will see the folly of it and pull the plug. <laughs> You'd hope so. But I can't help worrying that if so many people around here think it's a good idea... Maybe the church hierarchy will think so, too. Oh, Eddie, look at the size of it. That's Texel Rams for you, isn't it, Clary? Pretty hefty fellas. How did he get stuck in the edge like that? Well, the sheep have just been put out to tup, so the rams are, you know, uh, all getting a bit frisky. Oh, dear. So all I can think is, uh, is that his way with the ewes in this field and was after that lot over there. Randy beggar. I can't quite see why he's stuck. I mean, he's made a right old mess of the edge. It, oh, now it's starting to rain. Well, that's all we need. Hang on, I think I can see what the problem is. Yeah, he's got that foot caught on somewhat. Yeah, looks like a bit of bale of twine. Look there, can you see? Oh, yeah. But how are we supposed to get that off? Yeah, good question. Why did this have to happen when Edward's not here? No, it's sod's law, isn't it? For all I can think of, and I, I hate to ask this of you, Clary. What? The only way to immobilise a Texel is to get your hand under its jaw and twist its head to the side. Oh, I've seen Edward do it, but it takes one heck of a lot of muscle. And you want me to do that? Oh, I'll do that, but then you will have to take me pocket knife, get down on your hands and knees, uh, and cut that twine. Oh, I do. Right, keep as far away as you can, well to the side. Well... Needs must, I suppose. Right, let's give it a go. Uh, right, quick as you can, Clary. Okay. Keep still, you beggar. It's coming. Uh, uh, Nearly there. Uh, yes. Uh, oh. Eddie. I'm all right. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, you're a star, Clary. Couldn't have done that without you. <laughs> what are you laughing at? A lovely romantic evening ends with both of us on our backsides covered in mud. <laughs> Not what I had in mind at all. How much longer? It's only just gone 11. Having second thoughts about this, Mum. 
I mean, what can this midwife tell me that I don't know already? Quite a lot, I should imagine. It's all online. Everything you need to know about being pregnant. I don't need some stranger telling me what's going on in there. You really should have some tests done. What do you mean, tests? You said this was just about getting some advice. Well, it's just basic stuff, love. I mean, you haven't even had your blood pressure checked, have you? I don't want this person poking me about. Blood pressure test is just a collar on your arm. No poking involved. It's making me nervous just sitting there waiting. There's nothing to be nervous about, love. They're saying my blood pressure's through the roof. Nobody's going to judge you or nothing. <laughs> Midwife will just want to make sure everything's going along like it's supposed to. Apart from anything else, you should have had a scan by now. I don't want a scan, Mum. You're over 12 weeks, aren't you? Yeah, but I don't want to see pictures of my insides. It's not about you. It's about the baby. I know, I know. To make sure everything's OK. But I certainly don't want to see the baby. Well, you don't have to look. It makes it all too real. But the midwife will want to. That's her job. My head's messed up enough as it is. And even if you don't want to know that everything's all right, I certainly do. But I don't want you coming in with me, Mum. What? Well, I've got to do this on my own. Why? I've got to be responsible, make my own decisions. But you don't, do you? And I've got a whole list of questions I want answered. Chelsea Horobin? Uh, yeah, that's me. Hello, Chelsea. My name's Claire. And I'm Chelsea's mum, Tracy. Nice to meet you, Tracy. Would you like to come on through? No, not you, mum, please. Are you sure? You're welcome to have your mum with you. No. I've got to do this on my own. Have a seat, Chelsea. Thanks. So, what can I do for you today? I'm pregnant. Right. And have you seen a midwife before? I should explain. This weren't a planned thing, you see, it were a mistake. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these things happen. You just have to live with it, don't you? And to be honest, I'm only here today because my mum talked me into it. She said I had to get some professional advice. OK. Mm. So, you haven't seen a midwife before? No. Right. You'd better do some basic tests then, just to make sure everything's in order. I'm perfectly fine. I ain't had morning sickness or anything. Good to hear. So how many weeks are you? Well, it was the 1st of July. That was the date of your last period? What? No, that was when... You know, when it happened. What happened? You know, me and this bloke... It was only the once. There was this illegal rave scene and he spilled his pint of beer all over me. He was in a right old state, poor guy, because his girlfriend had ditched him and he was crying and miserable and, and it just happened. OK. Mm. So, what are your plans? What? You mean about keeping the baby? Mm. I mean, I don't know. That's why I'm here, because I just can't decide what's the right thing to do. And like I said, my mum insisted I should come and see you. Well, your mum was very wise. But just to be clear, Chelsea, mm -hmm. you say you had sex with this boy on the 1st of July, right? Yeah. So when was your last period? Well, I haven't a clue. But it would have been two or three weeks before that? Something like that, I suppose. Why? Because that's when we date a pregnancy from. What? Did you not know that, Chelsea? No. Which means you must be 16 or 17 weeks. No. No, that can't be right. Well, if you're quite sure of the date... You're saying I could be as much as 17 weeks? Yes. It does sound as if you're a little bit further on than you thought you were. Um, but honestly, Chelsea, it's not the end of the world. It might be if I want a termination. You're still considering that, are you? Like I said, I haven't decided yet. I see. Well, you do need to decide soon. I know that, I know, but... but 17 weeks. I didn't think I were that far gone. It's not too late, Chelsea. But for now, let's give you a check over. Do some tests and see how the baby's developing. Is that all right? Uh, yeah. OK. And then I'm going to refer you to the Pregnancy Advisory Service. I think you should be in touch with them straight away. Tracy? Oh, hello, Natasha. Oh, what are you doing here? Oh, well, I'm just... Um, I'm, I'm just waiting for someone. One of the nurses. She's an old friend. Oh. We're supposed to be meeting for coffee. Only she's a bit tied up at the moment. How about you? What brings you here? 
These two, obviously. Oh yeah, of course. I seem to spend half my life here. And there's always something needs checking up on. And then we had a little worry because Sarah didn't seem to be putting on as much weight as a sister. Oh. But they're so lovely, the staff here. Obviously used to seeing first-time parents panicking over nothing. Oh, well, they're looking fine, the two of them. <laughs> they are now. Nova had a right little meltdown earlier. They had their vaccinations today, and you didn't like it one little bit, did you, Poppet? Oh, dear. <laughs> so, which of the nurses is it you know? What's her name? Um, Julie. Ah, oh, the very tall one with the curly hair. No. Oh, no, no, she's Janet, isn't she? I'm here so often, I've got to know most of them. I'm beginning to think I might have got the wrong day. Or maybe you're waiting in the wrong place. This corridor is where the midwives are. Oh, is it? It's where the receptionist told me to wait. Oh, anyway, I'd better get these two home. Yeah, nice to see you, Tracy. Yeah, and you, <laughs> Natasha. You know what they say, bring out the washing, bring on the rain. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, darling, what are you doing here? I had an appointment at the Laurels cancelled, so I thought I'd pop home for lunch, oh. sit in the garden, enjoy the sunshine. What a treat for October. Yeah, a bit of a change from last night. Yeah, absolutely bucketed down, didn't it? I'm glad I wasn't caught out in that. It'll just be a sandwich for lunch, I'm afraid. I've got to get back to work. No, it's OK, I'll do it. Only we're having supper at the farm tonight. I haven't forgotten. Along with Tom and Natasha. So, no doubt Mum will have killed the fatted calf. You reckon? <laughs> well, it's not often we all get together these days. So, have you had a chance to talk to Joy this morning? Oh, Lee, I don't know what to do. That bad, was it? She didn't even ask me in. That's never happened before. You know what she's like. You knock on her door and it's, come in, have a <laughs> cup of tea. But not today. Oh, dear. Before I'd even said the words hot tub, she was apologising, telling me she thought she'd got a buyer for the thing, but it had fallen through, but we're not to worry, she'll get rid of it. And all this time, I'm trying to get a word in, but she's just not hearing me. I even invited her to come round here for a chin wag, but no, she wouldn't hear of it. So not like her. I blame Mick. Why? Well, it was his uncle's hot tub in the first place, wasn't it? Mm. So it was Mick's idea to recycle it here. <sighs> Joy was never a noisy neighbour before, was she? I mean, nosy, maybe, but never noisy. <laughs> True. But then she got together with Mick. And you know, she's obviously nuts about him. Doesn't want us blaming him for all the late night shenanigans. So she's shouldering the blame to protect him. Do you reckon? Well, I'm guessing, but if Joy won't talk to us about it, maybe we should have a word with Mick. Bye, Claire. And thank you. How'd you get on? Oh, Mum! Oh, Chelsea, love. Come and sit down. Come on. I've, I've really messed up this time. Why, what's happened? What does she say, the midwife? I've been such an idiot. You tried to tell me and I wouldn't listen. I just didn't realise about the time thing. What do you mean, the time thing? I got the dates all wrong. It was in my head that you measured being pregnant from when you had sex. Oh, dear. But she told me it's from when you last had a period. Didn't I make that clear to you? You mean you knew? Yeah, of course I did. Uh, I just assumed... Well, you said you'd researched it all on the internet. I obviously missed that bit. So there was I, thinking I was only about 14 weeks pregnant. But she said I was 16 or 17 weeks. Which is why I've been on at you to make a decision, love. She put her stethoscope on my tummy and said she could hear the baby's heartbeat. She wanted me to listen to it, but I couldn't. It brought it all home to me, Mum. It just made it all too real. So, does that change things for you? How can it not? So, are you saying you're going to keep the baby? No. I mean, I don't know. I still... I need time to get my head around all this. But time is running out, love. I know, I know, but... Anyway, the midwife said she couldn't talk to me about termination. I'd have to go to the pregnancy advisory service. Oh. She actually rang them and made an appointment for me. That was nice of her. When for? Friday. Right. So then I really will have all the facts. And then I'll know what to do. Oh, look at Nova kicking her little legs out. Yeah, she does that a lot. 
I think she's going to grow up to be a footballer. It's what they do at that age, isn't it? <laughs> Say then, doesn't she just lies there, smiling benignly? <laughs> Don't you, my lovely? <laughs> Look at that great big soppy grin. Oh, I expect she'll get the kicking habit soon. Oh, I remember what Jack was like at that age. Ooh, I think Henry's hit a winning shot. Oh, looks like it. <laughs> oh dear, look at poor old Dad chasing after the ball. <laughs> Where does he get the energy? He's not bad for 71, is he? <laughs> he was bending my ear earlier about that business of the pants. Oh, he's not still going on about that, is he? he seems to reckon we were robbed. Well, it was all about soil quality. The better your soil... The more holes in your pants. I know. And of course we've been organic here for... <sighs> best part of 40 years. So how could anyone possibly have better soil? Exactly. And Stella didn't cultivate the lovely soil around Brookfield bungalow. She just inherited it from dear old Bert Fry. Oh, phew, that was a bit energetic. <laughs> Who won? Henry. Obviously. <laughs> what have you done with him? The boys? Oh, they've just gone indoors with Granny and Grandad in search of crisps. Of course. He's turning into a very promising batsman, is Henry. Won't be long before he's co-opted into the Ambridge team. Does the Ambridge team still exist? Yes, of course. Only it's all been about the veterans this year, isn't it? Oh, I expect the regular team will be back next year. Although I was collared by Leonard the other day, who's keen to get some winter nets practice going. So the veterans team is soldiering on, is it? Leonard seems to think so. Mm. And I've had a few ideas about off-season exercises for them. I must have a word with Tracy about it. Oh, I don't think Tracy will be playing cricket any time soon. Why do you say that? Well, I took these two along to the baby clinic this morning for their 12-week vaccinations. Oh, gosh, they're 12 weeks already. I know. Feels like yesterday. Anyway... After they'd stopped screaming their heads off, I was on my way out with a pram, when who should I bump into but Tracy? At the baby clinic? What was she doing there? Well, that's what I said. She came up with this cock and bull story about meeting up with an old friend who was one of the nurses, allegedly called Julie. <laughs> but there isn't a nurse called Julie there. How do you know? I'm a regular at the baby clinic, Lee. I know most of them. Uh, there's a chart on the wall with photographs of them all and their names, and there's definitely not a Julie. That's weird. Well, what was really weird was that she was sitting outside the consulting room of one of the midwives. What? Like she was waiting to be seen. Really? Are you saying Tracy Horriban is pregnant? What possible other reason could there be for seeing a midwife? I know, mate. I know. Joy is so cut up about it. Which is the last thing we wanted, mate. It's because it's you. What do you mean? If it had been any of the other neighbours complaining, she would have said, whoa, sorry, we'll keep the noise down, we'll have an nine o'clock curfew. But you two, you and your boys, you... Well, you're like family to her. We're very fond of her. Not like her actual family, like, you know, what's her name? Rochelle, is it? Their daughter, yeah. I have no idea what's gone wrong between those two. Does her actual daughter ever come and visit? No, we've never met her. And I know there are grandchildren. Joy never seems to get to see them either. Then what's going on there? But you and your boys, the way she talks about you, it's like you're a family. And she just... She can't forgive herself for having offended you like that. But we're not offended, Meg. It's really great to see her enjoying herself. It's just, you know, on a school night. I have to admit, that's my fault, that is. And we have to get up early for work. Never did know when to stop me. In fact, this whole thing's my fault. It was me talked her into having the hot tub in the first place. I knew she'd love it. She obviously does. And Helen and me... We feel terrible that we've ruined it for her, for both of you. <laughs> hey, so we're all of us miserable. Strikes me that makes no sense at all, does it? So could you have a word with her, do you think? I already did, mate. Quite a lot of words. Uh, although, I wonder. What? Tell me, Lee, have you ever tried a hot tub? Me? Oh, no, never really appealed to me. Yeah, you don't know what you're missing, mate. Now, I was about this for a champion idea. Come here, I'm back. Uh, I'm in the garden. Just go along with me, mate. Hey, Agree with everything I say. OK, be a pal. We'll get this sorted. I'll make a cup of tea, shall I? Oh, you're busy. I'll be in the kitchen. No, no, no. No, come here, Joy. Uh, Lee and me, we have a proposition to put to you. Come. Over here, darling. Afternoon, Joy. Hello. Now, us two, we've been having a tete-a-tete. -tete. And Lee's been telling me he's never had a go in a hot tub. And he'd really love to. Isn't that right, Lee? Uh, yeah, I'd really love to. And he was just telling me that Helen would too. Well, I'm not sure... But... Wouldn't she, Lee, old me? Yes, she would, absolutely. She'd love it. And so they were wondering if one evening, when we're out, if they could come over and give it a bit of a whirl. But I thought you wanted me to get rid of it. No, Joy, we really don't. We never had a problem with the tub. It was just, you know... Me making a racket, wasn't it? Not knowing when to turn the volume down. 
but you remember, Joy, how much you loved the tub first time you got in. Oh, I did. All those bubbles. It was just... Ooh, such a lovely feeling. And I bet you, when Lee and Helen try it, they'll have just the same lovely feeling. Well, if that's what you'd like. Oh, we would, Joy. We really would. All right, then. So, that's settled. Next time we're out of an evening, we'll let you know. And if you like it, well, think what fun we could all have together. The four of us. Hello, Alan. Don't often see you in the tea room. <laughs> I'm supposed to be meeting Jim, but he doesn't seem to be here yet. Just been chatting to Emma. She told me the good news. The good news? The PCC in favour of the new stained glass window for the church. Oh, that. Uh, yes. I haven't spoken to Gran, but Emma says she's absolutely delighted. And she's had this wonderful idea. Uh, Mrs Woolley has? <laughs> no, no, Emma. But she talked to Gran about it, and Gran's very much in favour. Um, what she's going to do is set up a competition for local children to come up with a design for the window. Oh, I I'm not sure that's a good idea. Why not? Well, I mean, even supposing the thing goes ahead, it would have to be professionally designed. Yes, yes, of course. But the idea is that because it's going to be a window celebrating not just Nova and Seren, but all children and new life, wouldn't it be perfect if the basic design came from a child? I mean, just as a sort of rough outline that a professional designer could build on. Well, yeah, that's all very well, Helen, but, but the window hasn't been approved yet. Emma said the PCC were unanimous. Yes. And but... she's talking about getting the primary school involved. But it has yet to get the approval of the diocese. And Jack's already started working on his design. Oh, I, I wouldn't get his hopes up if I were you. Why do you say that? Well, because <laughs> suppose my lords and masters refuse permission for it. Is it a good idea to raise the hopes of local children only for them to be dashed if the thing doesn't well, go ahead? if the local community's all in favour, no, surely that will carry a lot of weight. Sorry, this is Jim. I'd, I'd better see what's happened to him. Oh, OK, okay I'll leave you to it. Bye. Ah, uh, hello, uh, Jim, where are you? I'm on the ring road, waiting for the rescue service. The Riley's broken down. Oh, not again. I know, I know. I'm going to have to admit defeat and trade it in for something a bit more reliable. Oh, don't say that. But we were supposed to meet at four o'clock, weren't we? Yeah, that was the plan. And I really could do with a shoulder to cry on. Oh, dear. The deuce is not going to be home till late this evening. What's wrong? What's happened? Oh, it's just Peggy Woolley's wretched window. Yes, I did hear the PCC were all in favour. It's not just the PCC, it seems the entire village. Oh, dear. Well, look, I'm not doing anything this evening. Since I'm letting you down over tea, why don't I buy you a drink? Oh, you don't have to do that, Jim. No, I'd like to. Well, if you're sure. Half past seven in the ball. I'll see you there. And Joy agreed? Yes. OK. Oh, come on, love. This is progress. We're back on speaking terms. I know, I know. And if it stops her getting rid of the hot tub... I just hate the whole idea of hot tubs. <laughs> I know you do. I can't see the point. It's like sharing someone else's bath water. <laughs> full of their sweat and dirt. Oh, come on, love. Oh, not to mention mixed pungent aftershave. It's no worse than a swimming pool. Uh, swimming pools have chlorine in them. So are you saying you won't do it? No. Of course I will. But if they're going to be out, well, we could just sort of splash about a bit and then come home. And Joy would be none the wiser, would well, she? yes, we could. But you never know. It might be fun. Oh. <laughs> well, we'll see. Anyway, how's your day? Oh, you know. Cheesy? Mm, yeah, pretty cheesy. Ran into Alan today. He's not at all happy about Gran's plan for the church window. Why not? I don't know. Emma had mentioned to me that he was a bit anti the whole project, but I'd forgotten that and started telling him all about this competition she's launching for the kids. You should have seen his face, Lee. He obviously thought it was a terrible idea. Hello! You two! Oh, hi, Mick. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Has Lee told you about our little plan? I yes, yes, he has. And she's really up for it, aren't you, love? Uh, absolutely. I can't wait. Well, I've decided we should strike while the iron is hot. So me and Joy are going to have our supper at the ball tonight. Which means the hot tub is all yours. But you knew this was going to be a struggle. Yeah, I didn't think it would be this bad. I remember you said when Lillian first mooted the idea. I knew it would be popular with some people, but I, I honestly thought the PCC would recognise how inappropriate it is. 
particularly Neil. Yes, I really did believe he'd back me up. But no. And now it seems the entire village is against me. Well, I'm not. Mm. And I'm sure Usha's on your side. <laughs> but Emma, I mean... You heard her in the shop the other day, going on about the archers behaving like medieval lords of the manor, acting like the church is their personal fiefdom. And now she's having local kids designing the thing. Uh, don't despair, Alan. <sighs> no, I'm beginning to think I should just throw up my hands and accept the inevitable. Not when you're in the right. But seriously, Jim, I know. most people seeing this window won't know it's got anything to do with the archers, will they? I mean, they just see some pretty stained glass stars and flowers or whatever. But don't you think that it's the principle of the thing? Mm. Well, I suppose it's not like there aren't already memorial windows in the church. Jack Woolley's window, which is a war memorial. Nothing wrong with that. And the Grace Archer one, which can be justified on the grounds that she died tragically young. Not this one. It's not memorialising anything. It's supposedly celebrating a couple of kids who are probably going to be profoundly embarrassed by it when they get to be teenagers. <laughs> what makes you say that? Well, suppose they decide to become Buddhists. <laughs> or atheists. <laughs> now, that's wishful thinking on your part. But the point is, Alan, you've got to stick to your guns. Yeah, well, I fear it's going to go ahead, whatever I say. But the thing has to be approved by your bosses. Yes, we have to apply for a faculty. What's that? It's a sort of, a, well, ecclesiastical planning permission. And the application has to include a statement of need. I.e., does St Stephen's really need this? Well, surely the answer to that question is a resounding no. Yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? But they do tend to put a lot of faith in local opinion. They'll probably insist on a public meeting. And what about English heritage? Don't they get to have a say? Well, they'll be consulted, and others will have a say too. If there's no clear way forward, it may have to go to the consistory court. Consistory court? Yes, it's ancient church court. goes back centuries. Uh, and how long's all that going to take? Well, none of it is exactly swift. Years, by the sound of it. You'll probably have retired before they reach a conclusion. <laughs> oh, very likely. But that's no reason to give up. You know you have right on your side, so fight the good fight. Now, can I get you a top-up? Oh, I'd love one, Jim. But unfortunately, I've got another problem. Pigeons in the church. Oh, no. I've got to try and get them out. They're leaving droppings all over the pews. And we've got a wedding on Friday morning. So, how do you feel about it now? I'm getting used to it. Really? Yeah. It's like every part of your body has been gently massaged all at once. Oh, I could very easily fall asleep. You're loving it. Of course I am. It's amazing. I just feel I should disapprove of hot tubs because they're so bad for the environment. Now switch off that fretting brain of yours <laughs> and relax. Come on. Think about the bubbles caressing your feet mm. and your calves and your knees. And all around your thighs. Mm, lovely. Cooey! Joy! Hello! Oh, you're back already. And you've got your swimming costume on. Yeah, I hope you don't mind. Only it was a bit noisy down the bowl. And we'd finished with dinner, so we thought we'd come home and join you. <laughs> so we crept in and got changed. Wait, we were just about to head home, weren't we, Lee? Oh, don't go yet. No, it's past the boys' bedtime and we can't leave Mum to cope with that. Oh, come on, just a little while longer. Move over a bit, Lee. Let me squeeze in beside you. Oh, sorry. Oh, I love that sensation, don't you? All the bubbles. Yes, it's very relaxing. What have you done with Mick? Oh, he'll be out in a minute. He was just getting his speedos on. Speedos? And finding us all something nice to drink. Here I come. Ready or not. Oh, but oh, my goodness. You're running a bit late, aren't you? It's OK. I just had an email. Morning class is cancelled. Your lecturer's off sick. Honestly? What? You think I'm lying? Well, it wouldn't be the first time, George. If I was going to be playing hooky, Mum, it wouldn't be on a Thursday morning. This is the one class I really look forward to every week. Oh, right. Well, hurry up and finish your breakfast. I've got to clear up this mess before I go to work. And I promised Fallon I'd open up this morning. I'll clear up. 
You did it yesterday and Monday. No, leave it, Mum. Let me do it. What are you after, George? I'm trying to be helpful, that's all. That I do not believe. You're after something, aren't you? Well, to be honest, I was sort of wondering, and I know this is a big ask, Mum. What? Could I possibly have an advance on my allowance? How much? Say, three weeks? 45 quid? 45 pounds? What do you want that for? A gaming chair. A what? A gaming chair. What is that? For computer games. It's sort of like an office chair, you know, with high back and arms. Only, all I've got is that rickety wooden thing with the sagging seat. And when I'm spending time at the console, I always end up with backache. You shouldn't spend so much time at the console, should you? Oh, come on, Mum. I'm allowed a bit of relaxation after a hard day at college. And you don't want me developing a hunchback, do you? I don't think there's any danger of that. But this chair, it's second hand, obviously, but it looks in really good nick and it's the most amazing bargain. Please, Mum, I'll do the washing up for the next three weeks. And empty the bins? Yeah, all right. And put your dirty clothes in the laundry basket instead of on the floor? I promise. Well, all right, just this once. Come on, you stupid bird. Look, there's a lovely blue sky out there. What are you doing skulking in here? Go on, pigeon. Move. Oh, <laughs> well done, Usha. Well, that's three of them out of the way, which just leaves that one up there. Yeah, and it's not moving. I swear it was perched up there when I came in last night. I thought it was the only one. Well, you were wrong there, weren't you? These other three must have been hiding up in the roof somewhere. Mm, and they've left a right old mess. Yeah, they have, haven't they? Anyway, let's get on and clean it up and hope that that last one takes advantage of the open door. <sighs> right, rubber gloves on. Mm. What a lovely way to spend my morning off, cleaning up pigeon droppings. Oh, it's not exactly part of my job description, either. <sighs> We're short of church wardens, so thanks for helping out, love. Oh, look at this mess. Mm. I swear I cleaned that pew last night. Well, you didn't make a very good job of it. I did, actually. That's all fresh poo. Oh, just what I need to know. Oh, I had a chat with Ruth this morning. Yeah? Mm. She told me that your predecessor used to phone David when there were pigeons in the church yeah. and someone would come and shoot them. But shoot them? Well, it's what farmers did with pigeons, isn't it? You can't let guns go off in the church. You could take out one of the windows. Well, I wouldn't mind betting there's a bit of lead shot buried up there in the roof beams. Uh, anyway, I don't think it's on killing one of God's creatures in his house. Well, so what are you going to do with that one up there, if it won't move? Oh, look, let's just get these pews cleaned up first. And then, well, with a bit of luck, it'll have found its own way out. Mm -hmm. George? Oh, Grandpa, I didn't hear you come in. Obviously. Hang on a sec, I just need to close this. No, no, leave it. What are you doing looking at chairs? It's a computer chair. I was just browsing. So what were you doing with your phone? I was texting a mate. Come on, George, I weren't born yesterday. You were going to buy that chair, weren't you? No. So you do have some money then? Now, uh, where did that come from? Let me guess. Uh, you sweet talk to your mum? It's only my weekly allowance. Well, your mum's been singing your praises, telling me what a good boy you've been this past week or so, helping round the house, doing the washing up. You just try to be helpful. Really? It's a load, isn't it? Not exactly what you're famous for, George. So how much did she give you? She didn't give me anything. Oh, come on. I quite clearly saw you trying to buy some fancy chair on the internet. So what if I was? It's none of your business. All right. The fact that you owe me 75 quid is none of my business. I will pay you back, Grandpa. Trust me. It's just this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. This brilliant gaming chair going for a song. I can't just let it go. Oh, no, yes, you can. And I know it's a hard lesson to learn, but just because you really, really want something doesn't mean you can spend money that you owe to someone else. But it's such a waste. Well, you shouldn't have wasted 75 quid of my money on a bunch of so-called turkey bolts that any fool could see were pheasants. You're never going to let me forget that, are you? Not until you've repaid your debt, I'm not. And another thing, George. What? Why aren't you in college? Class was cancelled. The teacher's off sick. 
Mr. Unwin, isn't it, on a Thursday morning? Yeah. So, uh, if I was to ring the college and inquire after Mr. Unwin's health... Oh, no, no don't do that. So you're skiving, are you? Well, it's... It's just... I was supposed to research this thing about animal husbandry, and I read all the notes and everything, but then I was supposed to write this report. What, like a, an essay or, or something? And I did try, Grandpa, but I just couldn't get my head round it. Well, I... I can sympathise with that, George. I, I never got the anger writing stuff. But you chose to go to college. It weren't really my choice. What do you mean? Mum and Ed and Will, they talked me into it. And I'm starting to think it was a big mistake. You're not serious. I'm going to have to drop out. I mean, I love all the practical stuff. It's just the writing. I sit there looking at the paper and my mind goes blank. I'd be better off just getting a job on a farm. Right, I'm going to get it this time. Oh, nearly. You were still a good two feet away from that bird. Oh, less than that. And it didn't budge. I'm beginning to think it's a statue. No, no, I can see it moving. But it is completely unperturbed by you chucking hymn books at it. <laughs> we need to think of something else. Well, can't we just leave it? I mean, it's been sitting up there so long, it's probably gone up there to die. I don't want a dead pigeon falling off that ledge in the middle of tomorrow's wedding service. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Could do. And it would probably be interpreted as an extremely bad omen for the marriage. Ooh, look on the bright side, why don't you? Actually, no, come to think of it, there is a ladder in the vestry. How big? Mm, Biggish. I don't think it would reach all the way up there, but if I climbed up with some sort of long stick... What, like a broom handle or something? Yeah, that would do. I could probably get near enough to give the thing a poke. <sighs> Sounds a bit hazardous to me. Well, have you got a better idea? Well, I don't want you falling off and breaking your neck. I won't. That would be too great a sacrifice just so this wedding party can have a nice clean church. Look, you can hold the ladder for me. Come on, let's see if we can find it. <sighs> so there they were, the two of them luxuriating in the bubbles. Only Joy and Mick came home early. And without saying anything, they got into their swimmers. Oh, dear. <laughs> And the next thing Ellen knows, there's this great bear of a man who she's only just met, wearing nothing but the tiniest pair of trunks, jumping into the tub beside her. <laughs> Poor woman. I mean, she can laugh about it now, but I think she was pretty freaked out at the time. He's a big fella, that Mick. You imagine him in speedos. Oh, I'd rather not. <laughs> so what did they do, her and Lee? Oh, they made their excuses and left. Anyway, <laughs> did you want something, Eddie? Yes, uh... I wanted a word about George. Oh, no. What's he done now? Did he say his class at college had been cancelled this morning? Oh, don't tell me. Not true, I'm afraid. Crafty so-and-so, and I just gave him an advance on his oh, allowance. Because no. he was being really good and thoughtful, helping round the house while I have his guts for garters. No, I really no, no, will. No, 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 no. Hang on a minute, Emery. He's not just skiving off for the hell of it. I get the impression that he's really struggling at college. What? Not coping at all. But he's been saying how much he loves it. Oh, he does. The practical bits. Dealing with animals, taking tractors apart, all that kind of stuff. But the book learning and the writing essays, he, he's not coping with that. He hasn't said anything. No. Well, I get the feeling he, he doesn't want to let you down. You and Edward and William. Oh, well, I think skiving off and lying about it's going to make us proud. Oh, don't be too hard on him, love. None of our family have been much good at all the academic stuff. Why didn't he say, Eddie? Any lunch coming? <coughs> oh, you're busy. I'll come back later. No, George, you come here. Grandpa's just been telling me. Don't get mad at me, Mum. I'm not mad at you. I'm just really sad that you're struggling at college. You didn't think you could come and tell me about it. Oh, I, I thought I could go and find myself a job and, and then tell you. What sort of job do you think you could get? Just... You know, working on a farm. As a labourer? Yeah. And that's your ambition in life, is it? To be a labourer? I could learn on the job, like you did. George, farming's not like it was in Grandpa's day. It's a lot more scientific now, with climate change and all that. You have to know about, you know, soil structures and drought-resistant crops. And that's the bit I can't get my head round. Well, then we've got to get you some help. Oh, what? You're going to get me a private shooter, are you? Don't be daft. <laughs> There must be someone who can help. What about me? 
Oh, you're joking. No, I'm not. She's really good at writing essays and stuff. Yeah, and she got great GCSE results, didn't she? I am not taking lessons from Mia. Why not? B because she'll bang on at me about why we should all be vegan and shouldn't be breeding sheep. Well, you'll just have to put up with that, won't you? I'll give her a call this evening and see if we can come to some arrangement. No, Mum, please. I'm not taking no for an answer, George. This is a complete nightmare. I mean, can this day get any worse? Right, if we move the ladder a bit further this way, right? It's not going to work, Alan. Oh, ye yeah, of little faith. But this ladder is nowhere near long enough. Yeah, it's the only one we've got. Come on, just another couple of feet. There you are, that's better. Then I can lean over and hang on to the pillar. Whilst waving a broomstick with your other arm. Well, it's a perfectly straightforward manoeuvre. I'd love to know your definition of straightforward. Oh, come on, love. It won't take a minute. Are you going to hold the ladder for me? Oh, if you insist. Uh, where's the broomstick? It's there. Oh, shall I climb up and you hand it to me? Not if I'm holding the ladder. All right, all right. I'll carry it with me. There you go, all right. Ready? As I'll ever be. Right, up I go. Ah, oh, that's far enough, Alan. No, no, I've got to get nearer the top or I won't be able to reach. Uh, now, if I balance myself against the pillar... No, no, Alan, don't do that. You're pushing sideways on the ladder and it really... I, I can't uh, hold uh, it. Uh, oh. 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 Alan? Alan, are you all right? Yes, yes, I, I think so. Oh. What's wrong with your hand? Nothing, it's fine. I'm fine. Which is more than can be said for the Jack Woolley window. Oh, come on, Lily, there's a quiz night at the Bull. I've got an essay to write. It's Friday night, for heaven's sake, and Mum's coming, aren't you, Mum? Yeah, I thought we could maybe get someone to join us and make up a team. I'm really not in the mood for going out. Well, you were in the mood on Monday night. That was different. I heard you staggering home in the small hours. I was having a laugh with some friends from uni. Oh, so you're giving up on your Ambridge friends now, are you? No, of course not. I just have rather more important things to do than pub quizzes. You know what, Lily? You're no fun anymore. <sighs> you all right, love? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just... What? Well... You know when I went out on Monday to celebrate selling that picture? Yeah. I met up with these three friends. Well, they're not friends really. Not yet, anyway. Just three other girls on my course who I got chatting with. And they're great. They're lovely. But they're all younger than me. Only two or three years. But they'd come to university straight from school. And none of them have lived away from home before or had any experience of work beyond a Saturday job in a charity shop. I told them how long I'd spent selling kitchens and they all looked at me in disbelief. Like they'd never dream of doing anything so mind-numbing. Oh, they'll learn. And none of them had ever lived with a partner. And I just sort of felt... Old? Well, that too. But it's more... Don't get me wrong, Mum. I have no regrets, whatever, about the breakup. But me and Russ, we were together for so long. I do sort of feel... Unmoored, I suppose. It's hardly surprising, darling. Like I don't know where I belong anymore. It'll take you a while for you to find your feet again, but you'll always belong here. I know. Why don't you come along with Freddie and me tonight? Pub quizzes are always fun, and there'll be family around and old friends. You won't feel unmoored at the ball. Do you know what happened at the church? How do you mean? When I came by this morning, there were some men boarding up one of the windows. It had got broken, apparently. No, oh, I wouldn't know. I haven't been out today. Uh, vandals, I suppose. Only there was a wedding this morning, wasn't there? Was there? Don't suppose they were best pleased, having a boarded up window in the photographs. Mm. Anyway, Tracy, how are you? Oh, I'm OK. Well, you don't look OK. You should take the evening off. Give the pub a miss. I can't, Susan. I just can't afford to miss a shift. 
And anyway, that wouldn't be fair on Kenton and Jolene. But you look terrible. <sighs> Don't worry. There'll be a good thick coat of concealer going on my face before I venture out. And uh, how are things with Chelsea? I'm just waiting for her to get back. She had her appointment with the Pregnancy Advisory Service this afternoon. Well, didn't you want to go with her? Of course I did. But she wanted to go on her own. Are they going to tell her anything she doesn't know already? She didn't know how to count how many weeks pregnant she is, so who knows? I did tell you that, didn't I? Yeah, you did. So, she could be as much as 17 weeks. What this lot are supposed to do is explain to her about termination. Oh, it's a bit late for that, isn't it? Not too late, but she ain't got long. Oh, I can't help thinking. Well, well, the fact that she's taking so long to make up her mind about this. What? In her heart of hearts, she must really want this baby. I don't believe that for a moment. I mean, you know what she's like normally. Always knows exactly what she wants and goes for it, full throttle. And she can be a right old bossy boots, forever telling everyone else what to do. Always knows best as our Chelsea. Until, suddenly, now she doesn't. But because she knows that if she goes ahead and has the baby, it's going to make life even more difficult for you. And that's why she's hesitating, why she can't admit to really wanting to keep it. That's wishful thinking on your part, Susan. No, it isn't. I know how you feel about abortion. Oh, especially at 17 weeks. I just don't think it's right. Oh, Susan, please. Well, that's how I feel. I know how you feel, but I can't agree with you. If Chelsea decides to terminate this pregnancy, I shall respect her decision. Now, can you please shut up about it? Well, it was time I was getting home anyway. But if I were you... But you're I... not, are you? I was only going to say, take the evening off. I can't. Oh, just this once. Quiz nights at the ball are always mayhem. Take my mind off things, won't it? Well, if you must... Maybe I'll come down later, give you a bit of moral support. Now, we have to have a name for our team. Well, can't we just be the Pargeters, since it's only the three of us? No way. Shane Rex couldn't make it. Yeah, we're going to be a bit stuck on questions of sport, aren't we? I, I can do sport. So, who won the Premier League in 2020? Manchester City. Is he right? I have no idea. That's <laughs> usually Manchester City. Or was that year it was Liverpool? Anyway, come on, we've got to have a name for our team. Something punny. Punny? Yeah, like blood, sweat and beers. Yeah, but we're not drinking beer. But that was just an example. Tequila Mockingbird. What? <laughs> That's very good. I, I, I don't get it. Oh, come on, Freddie. Surely even you've read Tequila Mockingbird. Oh, I see. It, it, it's a bit literary, isn't it, for people around here? We could always call ourselves the village idiots. No, that's one of the regular teams. Richard Thwaites lot. They're really good. Um, what, eggheads? That's just showing off. Um, Masterminds? No, it's got to be something funny. Right, folks. The clock has struck. The moment has arrived. It is time for our quiz. <laughs> Yes, so let's check who you've got in tonight. Oh, and uh, just a reminder, in case some clever clogs was thinking of calling their team Game of Phones, that's not allowed. That's what I mean, a good pun. So, all phones off, please. Oh, and, uh, yes, if you have to answer a call of nature, you leave your phone on the table. Right, so, over here, we've got the A-team, we've got Simple Minds, and in the corner there, what are you calling yourselves? I Smarticus. Oh, that's a good one. I am Smarticus, OK. Quick, think of something. And over here we have the usual suspects and, of course, the village idiots. Yay! And uh, my sister Elizabeth, um, are you joining us? Yes, and we're the Quizzy Lizzies. <laughs> Lily. <laughs> well done. The Quizzy Lizzies. Right, OK, pencils to the ready, everyone. Let's kick off with some nice, easy general knowledge. Question one. According to George Orwell... Who is watching us? That's too easy. Who's George Orwell? Freddy. Big Brother is watching you. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, question two. In tennis... Ah, one for you, Freddy. What piece of fruit is found at the top of the men's Wimbledon trophy? Oh, I don't know the first thing about tennis. It's pineapple. Oh, well done, Mum. How did you know that? Well, I have been known to watch the occasional Wimbledon final on TV. Question three. What's the name of Donald Duck's girlfriend? It's Daisy Duck, of course. Everyone knows that. I didn't. Well, three out of three. We're doing all right so far. And question four. What is the only planet in our solar system that is not named after... 
And in third position with 71 points, we have the Village Idiots. Wow. That means we're in the top two. We might have even won. Don't get your hopes up, Freddie. <laughs> and just ahead of them, with an amazing 74 points, it's the Quizzy Lizzie. Oh, well done, us. Oh, well done you, darling. You got the most right answers. <laughs> Which means that tonight's winners, with an astonishing 89 points, are, not for the first time, the 80. They always win. Oh, well, no one's going to outsmart Jim Lloyd, are they? I bet he didn't know who Donald Duck's girlfriend is. <laughs> anyway, I think we did brilliantly, considering there were only three of us. So, who's for another drink? Oh, yes, please. Same again? Uh, just a soda water for me, darling. I've got to get you home in one piece. OK, I'll fight my way to the bar. <laughs> did you enjoy that? I really did, yes. I wasn't looking forward to it, but it was great fun. And it was lovely to see Pip earlier. I haven't seen her since she and Toby went their separate ways. So you were sharing notes on breakups, were you? Well, I know it's not the same, but she did say that she felt at a bit of a loss without Toby being around. So I'm not the only one. But she's still got Rosie. Mm. And it was lovely to see Josh. So, yeah, tonight has made me feel happily moored. Ah, so I did the right thing, did I? Dragging you away from your studies. Yes, you were right, Mum. It's been a lovely evening. Thank you. You okay? Oh, glad to sit down for a minute. I'm not surprised. Been non-stop all evening. Should think you could do with a stiff drink, couldn't you? Not allowed. Jolene's very strict about that. No drinking behind the bar. Oh, come on. It's the end of a very busy evening. She's not going to begrudge you a small glass of wine. Well... I'll pay for it. And you can get me one while you're about it. All right, then. What shall we have? House white, OK? Yeah, lovely. So, uh, what did Chelsea say when she came home? Oh, absolutely nothing. Oh, she still hasn't come to a decision. Came back armed with a whole bunch of leaflets. Said she had to read them all and make sure she understood things properly. Are you paying for this by card? Oh, yeah. There you go, then. So, you're still in limbo. I'm not putting any pressure on her, Susan. Oh, I know, I know what you said. That's fine, that's gone through. Do you want a receipt? No, no. Cheers, then. Oh. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Oh, that is so good. Just what I need. Thanks, Susan. What's going on here, then? Oh, no. Oh, I paid for it, Kenton. I just thought she needed it. It has been one heck of a busy evening. You're not going to kick off over a small glass of wine, are you? No, no, not at all. I know it's against the rules. Oh, I don't give a damn about the rules. I've just had a shot of brandy myself. No, I just thought, well, in your condition... What? Oh, sorry, am I not meant to know? No, what? About you being, um, you know... Um, Expecting. What? No, uh, Jolene told me. I'm, I'm sorry, I thought it was common knowledge. Jolene told you? Yeah. That's why I was helping you carry the crates out from the cellar earlier. She said you shouldn't be carrying heavy loads like that. But, uh, where did Jolene get hold of a crate? It's all right, to... Susan. It's all right. Oh, dear. Have I put my foot in it? I'm sorry. Don't worry about it, Kenton. I should have realised where to get out. It was Natasha spotting me at the baby clinic, wasn't it? What are you talking about? And we all know what Ambridge is like for gossip. Isn't that true, Susan? Well, yes, but I can't keep anything to yourself, can you? Well, congratulations to you and to Jazza. That's very kind of you. And don't worry, it's only a very small glass of wine. Oh, well, enjoy it while you can. Cheers. What on earth? It's all right, Susan, it's all right. I should have guessed Natasha Archer wouldn't keep her mouth shut. What are you talking about? She saw me at the baby clinic, outside the midwife's room, while I was waiting for Chelsea. And she's obviously put two and two together and made five. So, so Natasha thinks you're pregnant and has been gossiping about it? Obviously. Well, so why don't you put a stop to it? Why let Kenton go on thinking that? Because I don't want Chelsea to be the subject of gossip. So if people want to believe false rumours about me, let them. 